This question says, write the balanced reaction for each of the following dissolving in water. Be sure to include states. Um, assume that uh, each is a solid before it is dissolved. So essentially, we have each of these things as a solid, and we're going to dissolve them in water. And we can write this as what looks like a chemical reaction, although whether it is or isn't is arguable, but it certainly looks like a chemical reaction. So we need to break this thing up into its ions. These are all ionic compounds. The way we can tell these are ionic compounds is because because they contain a metal and some nonmetals, um, in this case, polyatomic ions. And they all happen to be soluble in water. And in the next one, I'll talk a little bit about the solubility rules briefly, um, but this is all kind of a review from General Chemistry 1. So these are going to be ionic compounds dissolved in water. So there's two things that we need to know because these are electrolytes, which means they're going to break up into their ions. The first thing we need to know is what are the polyatomic ions? Because the polyatomic ions themselves are not going to break up. They're going to dissociate from the metal, but they're not going to break up. So for example, NO3 minus nitrate is a polyatomic ion. The nitrogen and the oxygen are not going to break up from each other, but they are going to dissociate from the sodium. The other thing we need to know is the charge on the metal. And in this case, we have all 1A metals. So as a brief review of the polyatomic ions, which you're going to need to uh, be familiar with, this is slide number 32, 39 excuse me, of the um, chapter 2 lecture notes. And here are some common, common polyatomic ions. On our sheet, we have nitrate, which is NO3, nitrogen, three oxygens, with a minus charge. We have carbonate, which is a carbon, three oxygens, with a two minus charge. And we have hydroxide, which is an OH with a minus charge. So you do need to remember these. You need to remember them okay because we need to remember that these are not going to break up they're just going to dissociate from the metal the other thing we need to know is the charge on the metal so in our case we have um in the different examples we have sodium potassium and lithium we happen to all have 1a metals 1a metals are plus one 2a metals are plus two and aluminum the 3a metal is a plus three the transition metals, you actually have to figure out the charge of, but I'm not going to uh, spend time on that right now, um, but that would be uh, reviewed in chapter two as well. So you would need a periodic table and you need to remember 1A metals are plus one, 2A metals are plus two, and aluminum 3A metal is plus three. So now we have this information of what are the polyatomic ions and what are the charges on the metals, and now we can write these dissociation reactions. So if we have NaNO3, this is going to break up into Na+, plus, again, the metal with the charge, aqueous, and NO3- minus nitrate, aqueous. So the polyatomic ion does not break up into nitrogen and three oxygens. It stays together. This just disassociates. It doesn't really break up. Next one, we're going to get K plus as the metal aqueous and CO3 2 minus carbonate aqueous. Again, we're checking the polyatomic ions to make sure that we get the right ones. Note that there's two Ks here, so we have to balance. There's going to be two K pluses here. Lithium hydroxide, we're going to get Li plus aqueous, and hydroxide is a polyatomic ion, OH minus aqueous like this. So you do need to be familiar with both the charges on the metals and the polyatomic ions to understand how these things dissociate in water. Um, this is very important um, in future questions on this uh, set.